change at the top can be good. A fight at the board level can be good, too. Those are the easy takeaways from high-level turbulence at Boeing and Disney. Today, both of these stocks rallied, and while management may dispute what caused these moves, I think the story is pretty straightforward. Boeing's cruised from 179 to 191 over the past week, as being clear that current management had to exit if it was ever going to put its manufacturing regulatory problems behind it. CEO Dave Calhoun would have to go. The chairman of the board would have to go. The head of commercial aviation would have to go. It didn't matter who the chairman of the board really was. There had to be a better person given everything that's going wrong here. It didn't matter who was building the planes. The head of the operations had to go. Boeing had to appease the customers, who were real angry because they spent billions on these planes only to be greeted with endless headlines about how they're constantly falling apart. They obviously had to appease the regulators, too. And now that these people are stepping down, everybody's appeased. You see, that's how it works in corporate America. The institution needs to be preserved, not the people. So Larry Kellner, the chairman of the board, had to be exchanged for Steve Molnikoff, even as Kellner was the former CEO of Continental Airlines, and Molnikoff formerly ran Qualcomm, which has nothing whatsoever to do with aircraft. Stan Deal, head of a commercial aircraft, well, he had to leave pronto because you need a fall guy, and to be fair, this division's a mess. Now Stephanie Pope, Boeing's chief operating officer, takes over. Internal, not great, but let's see what happens. Calhoun gets to stay until the end of the year because there needs to be a process, but he's gone as soon as the new CEO gets picked, no matter when. Then all the heat dies down and the regulators will move on, assuming Boeing can figure out how to safely build planes again. That's not an issue for the future. Oh, kind of, yes, it is. I don't know. It's hard to tell what's going to happen. Without change, the heat would never go away, though. The FAA would always find against them, and the angry customers would stop being customers. How about Disney? This stock has been a horror show for ages, and the board hadn't really been doing its job until Nelson Peltz, yes, the big-name activist investor, decided to launch a proxy fight. Suddenly, there was a sense of urgency and planned to take out costs. Now the stock's flying, almost a straight line from 88 to 119 since Peltz got involved. Amazing how much better the board can do when someone concentrates its mind and holds their feet to the fire. The changes are good. Disney's costs were too high. The company was initially going to take out $5.5 billion in costs, down $7.5 billion. Wow, a lot of costs, huh? The board didn't seem to have a lot of heat on themsel- themselves to find a new CEO, or they wouldn't have invited the old CEO back. The board's job is to have a succession plan. If they want to beat Pelts, they need to cut costs and come up with a solid succession plan for Bob Iger. They did the first. I figured they'll do the second because they hate the notion of Nelson Pelts joining the board. Anyone but Pelts. That's why the stock's going higher. Disney's board, especially its CEO, is desperate to stop it. And that means doing things that they wouldn't otherwise do, including some things that are really good for shareholders. If not for Peltz's involvement, I think this dog of a stock would be right back to the 80s. Now, notice, I'm not talking about anything involving the building of planes or the making of TV shows or movies or running theme parks. I'm talking process. And if you own the stock, be grateful the process is working and these institutions are being preserved. Like I said, there's always a bull market summer, and I promise you I'll find it just for you right here on Mid Money. I'm Jim Kramer. See you tomorrow. Last call starts now.